OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Okay, so I'm Barry Bakin, uh, and this is video discussion prompts and other fun and easy activities for ESL classes. Uh, I've been uh, an instructional technology teacher advisor for the last several years for uh, the Division of Adult and Career Education for the Los Angeles Unified School District. And I've also been a subject matter expert uh, for OTAN for, uh, at least a decade. I don't exactly remember how long now. Um, so I've had an opportunity to um, use a lot of these projects and also work with teachers who use these projects. And um, I think you'll be happy. So um, hopefully uh, after this webinar, you'll be able to implement several projects or activities, including some video based discussion prompts. And here's the key I hope with little or no. <laughs> preparation. Um, that's, that's sort of what I'm, I'm going for here. Um, so in any case, uh, one of the, the projects that I was uh, trying to uh, work with uh, right now uh, is a Get Acquainted uh, Kahoot. I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with uh, Kahoot. Uh, you know, people have been presenting uh, on Kahoot uh, for a good number of years, um, but basically, I'm, I'm, and what I'm actually doing is building one right now. Uh, this is the uh, Get Acquainted Kahoot, and uh, I would do this at the, uh, you know, like within the first week of uh, a semester, uh, and what I would do is, let me see if I can get my mouse going. Uh, I would line up, uh, you know, pretty much all of my students uh, in a long line around the classroom, uh, pose them against the, uh, the whiteboard and, and take this headshot. And then uh, eventually, uh, you know, after they got to know each other a little bit, but of course nobody really knows everybody uh, completely, uh, do a kahoot uh, in the first week to get students to make, see if they've, uh, started to learn everybody's name. Uh, so this had a couple of purposes. One, they get to know each other. Uh, and two, uh, it would introduce them to, you know, using cahoots in a, sort of a non-threatening uh, way. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. Uh, the, the, the first project uh, that I think, uh, you know, it's a nice, good starter. Uh, everybody seems to love food. Uh, you know, if you anything, do anything on uh, social media, you know, from Facebook to Instagram, people really uh, are taking, you know, pictures of food, whether they're at a restaurant or they're at home uh, and, you know, taking selfies, you know, of the food. Uh, and so there are a few projects that uh, you can do with this. Excuse me for just a moment. Okay, um, let's take a look at the next project or the first project. So it's not only just taking the, you know, the pictures, uh, which are a lot of fun, but then, uh, you know, converting that to some sort of project uh, that's appropriate for the class level uh, and language level. Uh, and technology level uh, that you're working with. So uh, in this project, you know, you can, not only are you taking a picture of the food, but maybe you're planning uh, a full dinner. And then you can add some, um, uh, you know, civics type skills or other skills and, you know, define a budget and then uh, maybe send them to the internet uh, to find the ingredients so they can figure out how much things um, are gonna cost. Uh, and then either write about it or do a PowerPoint. So for example, you know, this would have been, 
this is a, a student response, uh, a little bit of writing, you know, the ingredients of the, the shopping list with the, with the cost, and um, you know that becomes a project. And then, depending on uh, you know what technology you have, or whether you're in a face-to-face -face, uh, class or online class or hybrid class, you know, presenting that uh, dinner uh, to the rest of the of the students. And then uh, that sort of, you know, is an easy segue uh, into the, the next type of project. And basically uh, very, very um, flexible. Pretty much any topic that you're discussing in class can uh, easily be converted uh, to a PowerPoint presentation or a discussion uh, in an LMS. Uh, you know, and it's, again, it's mostly just, you know, inserting a picture uh, into your Word document, into your PowerPoint, uh, into a Google slide, and, and then a little bit of text. Uh, and then again, uh, depending on your, you know, your context, uh, doing that presentation in a Zoom meeting, or for the rest of the students, or doing it in front of the class. Um, but very, very flexible. And um, you as the teacher, you have lots of options, uh, you know, in terms of parameters, uh, you know, you can create a checklist of the types of things that uh, you want to see uh, in the presentation, uh, whether it be certain, you know, uh, grammatical structures or uh, certain other things that you've been studying in class, uh, you know, from the, not just the topic. And so this really great project anytime uh dropping things into a powerpoint presentation uh you know if we have time later and, and you're not really familiar with uh powerpoint or with uh you know uh, google slides um i can uh, do a, a, a real brief how to make an easy presentation um so here are uh, also some other examples of that but with slightly different uh, format. This would be like in an LMS. So this is a an actual project uh, by one of our uh, my colleagues, uh, and the idea here was, uh, as you can see, uh, this was back actually back at the uh, beginning of the pandemic, and it was to encourage uh, parents to set up a special uh, home school place, a, a work a school place at home. Uh, so. Uh, the, the parents are asked to take a picture or pictures of where their children are, are doing their uh, at-home schoolwork uh, or the Zoom meetings. And so uh, again, another nice idea from this is, uh, you know, people like to share uh, what they're doing with their kids. Uh, you know, they're real proud of, of that. And uh, this was a really nice project. Some parents really did uh, go out of their way to make the home learning uh, setup, uh, very, very nice for their kids and to differentiate it from the couch, for example. It wasn't just the couch anymore. Uh, it's the, you know, the study space. Uh, same thing here, uh, you know, really, really uh, proud of, you know, what the projects that they did to uh, help their kids in school or study online. Uh, you know, along the same idea, uh, this this comes out of actually uh, CTE, uh, again, a, a, a series of projects uh, involving students taking pictures with their phone uh, and, and doing a presentation uh, or demonstrating uh, that they understand the steps to a, a particular project or task. So uh, in this particular case, uh, the teacher, uh, you know, has given them uh, expectations, uh, and then the students had to, you know, just as they would in the class where the teacher could see it, uh, set it all up at home, take photos, uh, and then uh, submit the photos uh, to demonstrate that uh, they're aware of the proper sequencing of tasks for the CTE. But it doesn't, you know, obviously it's not just a CTE type project. Uh, anybody in uh, you know, 
can adapt this in ESL or academic settings to demonstrate anything that requires a, a sequence of, of events. So once you get those photos, then a really great extra project that uh, I'll go into a little bit more depth in is uh, turning them into a, a scrambled PowerPoint puzzle. Um, and so the idea is to um, take those same pictures that perhaps demonstrate the sequence and scramble them. So let me get out of this share and share something else. Okay, and um, let's see. Uh, let's see, uh, Toshiko, if, uh, if you can hear me, can you check the chat? Um, I sent you a message. Okay, and let's also just do one more uh, thing. Okay, so let me stop, start a new share. Okay, um, hopefully you can still see that. Um, are you able to see the, um, the slideshow that says steps for painting your nails? No, it's just, it's a oh. really large gray box that says slideshow. Okay, and hold on, let me, let me re stop the share and start it up again. Thank you for that. How about now? I think that's better. I see the green line. Yes, you're good. Okay, so this was an actual student project, uh, steps for painting your nails. Uh, basically what happens uh, if I do the slideshow. Uh, the student created this and quite a few uh, pictures. And with all the steps. So once that, that's the project in itself, uh, in this particular project, there was, the student also recorded their voice uh, describing uh, the steps. But to turn this into a scrambled project for which um, then can become a discussion prompt for uh, other students in the class, uh, this is what I would like, this is what I would do. Well, first of all, I'd probably get rid of the title slide because that's we don't need to, to do that, okay? And then probably I would uh, delete any of the, uh, the recording. So you can see the little icon here, you, you know, you can click on that and, and delete it. Uh, if there are uh, voices, because uh, sometimes they say, you know, first, I'm gonna do this. Second, I'm gonna do this. Next, I'm gonna do this. So uh, we don't wanna give the, the clues uh, away, so you know you can delete all the sound if there is any. Uh, and then the point is, we want to change the order and scramble the order. So the default uh, display for uh, PowerPoint, uh, you're probably very familiar with it. Uh, along the left side, you see all of the slides, and then uh, the slide that's highlighted uh, is displayed uh, in large format uh, in the center. And uh, that's like your workspace. But um, what I like to do for the scramble uh, case is uh, under view, you have some options. And one of the options is called slide sorter. Okay, slide sorter. And what that does is it sort puts the slide in 
number order, you know, just as a, they were uh, arranged vertically. Okay. So, but these, this you can drag around. So if I click on one, I can drag it and just, you know, at random, change the order. I hope that's random. Okay. And then what you can do uh, is go back to your presentation or, you know, what you might want to do is you might want to save that. So you save it, save it in the same place, and then just call it scrambled. You know, painting your nails scrambled. So now it's all in, it's not in order. So let me just enlarge it just a little bit. And uh, I want to open it up uh, to the uh, to the group. Uh, you can uh, unmute your mics and then uh, try to describe what you think uh, would be the first the first step. So you can, if somebody has an idea, uh, unmute yourself and sort of give a description of uh, what you see and which slide you think may be first. And, and oftentimes uh, there really isn't a, a wrong answer. Uh, you know, it could just be, uh, and that's the basis for a discussion itself. Um, maybe slide eight is the first slide because they have all the nail polish out and they're gonna choose the color that they want. Okay, I mean, that sounds legit to me. Uh, so, you, so, you know, working with the group, you know, I, I move that into, into position. And it looks like, it looks like slide nine is the last slide. Okay. That makes sense to me. Why do you suggest that? Well, it looks like she has 10 painted nails in slide nine. So that looks like it's the last slide to me. Okay. Of course, then, number yeah. six. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, never mind. Okay. So, and then as the teacher, of course, you can establish a conversation with the students, you know, you know, asking for reasoning, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Let me go back to, uh, to another possible uh, way that this, uh, you know, could be uh, useful. You go back to your normal. One of the things sometimes that I do with this, you know, get rid of that little, um, I make the, the picture just a little bit smaller, all right? And then I'll insert uh, a little text box at the top with a letter. So depending on, you know, what, and, and also you could probably get rid of the, any of the, the extra background stuff. You know, so you move that up at the top, so that, that way what happens, you know, you do that when it's in the initial view slide sorter. See, so that way there's letters. So that for, you know, if, if it's too hard to differentiate between a particular slide, it's easy enough to say, oh, let's put slide A at the end. Mm -hmm. Let's put slide B next. Oh yeah, slide C next. And then of course, uh, so you, you can do this as a group activity uh, with the whole class, so everybody's speaking, everybody's participating. Um, but you can also save that individually and then distribute it. And then the students who get it have to put it into the order individually, save it with their name on it, and then turn it in as, okay, I think this is the correct order. So, um, this is really nice. Again, uh, you know, in ESL classes, I use this to, to talk about, you know, adverbs of sequence. Uh, but CTE people, or really anybody, uh, can, can use it to uh, demonstrate knowledge of a, a particular task. Uh, any questions on that? Oh, okay, I see in this, um, the slide uh, in the chat. Um, can you do this in Google Slides? Uh, basically, yes. I can't demonstrate that at the moment, but yeah. 
Oh, uh, uh, my uh, my colleague Natalie uh, is saying yes. It's called uh, Grid View. Uh, Natalie, I, I sent you a text message. By the way, oh yes, great. Okay, I see that. You just answered. Okay. Uh, any questions about this particular task or activity? Okay. I, I don't hear anybody, so we'll we'll go on. Hold on for just a moment. Let me stop the share. And Okay, let's get back to the uh, presentation. Let's start a, a new share. Okay, so um, one more, We're not quite ready for that. Okay, so the next activity, uh, and this would be something that um, I'd like to sort of establish uh, at the beginning uh, of any semester. Uh, I called it uh, Find English in Real Life Treasure Hunt. And um, I made it known from uh, the beginning of the semester that uh, it was really great if students could bring in examples of things that we talk about uh, in class. Okay, and so, uh, and this would just, you know, it didn't happen all the time. But it would happen frequently enough. So in this particular case, I just, you know, we were, as you can see from the slide, uh, we were talking about uh, contractions and, you know, I was going through the I am not and discussing a little bit uh, the difference between uh, academic English and uh, other non-standard forms of English and, uh, and, and, you know, the next day, a student came and said, look, I found this in the newspaper. Uh, and so there it is. Uh, you know, some of you may be familiar with Boondocks, um, you know, but he, he, he was able to connect what he was studying uh, in class uh, with something that he saw in real life. And so uh, I would encourage that, you know, and of course, with phones nowadays, um, you know, it's real easy to find uh, public examples. And so um, these are a couple of, we were up doing passive voice uh, in that particular class. And so, uh, you know, these were things that the students found. It's very, just take a picture of it and, and bring it into class. Okay, so um, the next project uh, I call One Word Poems. Uh, and this is something that you can do in Publisher. Not everybody has Publisher uh, anymore, uh, but you can also do it in PowerPoint. Um, and so let me stop the share here. Oh, actually, first, let me show you a couple of student examples. Um, as you can see, the idea is just to illustrate a word uh, you know, with the image. So this is an actual student example. You know, it's very clear cut, very literal. Uh, another one, fairly uh, literal, you know, this being a team. Uh, but then also you get ones that are a little uh, less literal, a little bit more conceptual, the, the shaking of hands symbolizing uh, friendship. So um, my question to you is, uh, 
has anybody ever seen this before? Uh, being able to uh, form uh, words and then uh, use pictures to illustrate the words. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, let me take a quick look back into the uh, chat. Uh, I'm getting, uh, you know, are you willing to share your slide presentation with us? Uh, yeah, um, I didn't actually make this one into a, a, a PDF yet, uh, but if you, uh, if there's enough time at the end, I can, I'll convert it and, and drop it into the, the chat. Okay, well, thank you for those of you who are saying that these are great ideas. That's always nice to hear. Okay, so most people have not heard of the, uh, this idea. So what I'd like to do now is um, we'll share, uh, first I'll do it in Publisher, uh, if you still have Publisher, uh, and then we'll do it in, okay, let me share, then we'll do it in PowerPoint, because I think more people have PowerPoint. Okay, let me get to my share button again. And find what I want to share. Okay. Actually, let me, you know, let me pull it on this other screen. I'm, I'm working with two screens and um, that's why I'm turning my head to the side frequently. Okay, so how, how is that? This is a publisher and I already have one uh, up and uh, on display, uh, but let's just go ahead and start over. Um, so this is called Word Art. So this is a publisher page and it's gonna work very similar in PowerPoint, but you insert and then you look for the thing called Word Art. And you may not have ever seen this before. Uh, if if, if you've been using a Publisher or Word for a long time, it, it was there. They they changed the way it works a little bit, but you can still do the same thing. So uh, you see these sort of letter styles, and we'll go through a, a few of them. And you also see some things that already look like they've been uh, formatted. So you could pick one of those right away. Uh, and then it just says your text here. So let's say, uh, you know, you wanted to talk about roses. Okay. And you can make the size rather big uh, and say, okay. And so you can drag that into the center and then just expand it. So it fills up your page and, uh, you know, of course, somewhere on the, the page you want, you do want to show your students uh, about, um, you know, or you know, have them put their name on it, put the date, you know, as a, uh, a text box, that's, that's simple enough. Okay, um, see, and then, you know, you can go through, you can try a, a few different things, see what it looks like, okay? Uh, you can, they have these shape effects as well, or change, also change the shape, you get more things. Um, and obviously for this project, um, you want the letters to be as thick and as large as possible so you can uh, understand what the photo is. Um, so in any case, what do you do with this? How do you change it from a solid print to a photo? So uh, over here under uh, the fill for the for publisher, Okay, this may look familiar to you. Most of us never really go beyond this part where we change colors or something. But if you keep on going down, it says picture. And then you get that standard search and hopefully my internet here at school will, will work well. It's going a little bit slowly. That doesn't look good. Let's try it again. If not, we'll we'll do something else and look for a, 
a picture that I actually have on the computer. Well, this is awkward. Okay, so let's stop that for a moment. And I'll look for, a, I'll, instead of doing something that, you know, they have that screen that lets you choose things online. Uh, we'll do it with a picture and this, then I'll find something. We'll say, I guess, work offline. There we go. Uh, let's do, uh, there we go. Okay, so, but you saw what happened to fill it. So obviously now that's not roses anymore. So I have to go over to edit text and we'll say lunch. Okay, so again, basically all you're doing is matching the word uh, with the photo uh, behind, okay? Uh, and you can, you know, by, by clicking on it, and doing the format, you know, you could say, well, you know, maybe this, that one looks better. No, not really. Uh, how about that one? Okay. That, that's pretty good. A another thing you may want to experiment with, they have this one little thing called spacing. Uh, and, you know, when it loose means there's more space and less letter. So you probably would want very tight and you get more of the, um, the picture. So that's with uh, Publisher. And I, I can do that again, uh, but let me go back and let's try doing it now in uh, PowerPoint. And let me share one more time. And uh, PowerPoint is very similar. Same general idea. Actually, let me uh, see if I can drag this over to my other screen, if it will drag nicely, not really. Okay, let me stop the share and drag it first and then share again. Okay, so same type of idea in a PowerPoint slide but more people have PowerPoint than publisher. Um, so again, it's the same type of thing. Uh, we want to insert, and there it is, word art. Uh, pick the letter, okay. Uh, let's maybe, we'll do the sunflowers. So it's a slightly different type of thing. Uh, you can, let me get my mouse back okay drag it as large as we can uh and then you have text fill and there's your picture and maybe this time it will work let's do sunflowers okay there that seems to be working a lot better at the moment you select it and insert it and, and there it is, okay. Now, so this acts a little bit differently. In Publisher, if you change the size, the whole letters change. In, in this case, it, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, so uh, back, back at the home screen, um, there's a couple of ways. You can just choose a huge number, make it a little bit larger, but I also found this works really well increase font size. So it gets that much bigger. Okay, maybe that might be a little bit too big for that. Okay. Uh, and then you also have uh, some other types of things, shape effects. So there's a few other little things that can happen to it. 
all right, and text effects. And this is the one where you all of a sudden you see this transform. And so you have some different styles now. And so you just want to, you know, encourage your students to find the one that sort of illustrates, uh, you know, gets the image out there the best possible way. Okay. And there you go. So again, uh, in PowerPoint, you have text fill and picture. Okay. Um, you also have uh, back at that home uh, tab, you still have the, uh, the, the sizing, the character spacing. See, I, it, you know, it gave it a little bit more, see, from, you know, less letter to more letter. Okay. So um, any questions about that? Let me get back to the, the chat, see what's happening. Uh, Natalie, uh, what do you think? Somebody's asking anyone know if this is possible in Google Slides? I think it is, but uh, Natalie is my local Google Slides expert on campus. What do you think? Are you checking? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, if we have time at the end, we can, you know, open up Google Slides and, and look for it. Um, there's a question. Do you have tips on how to explain all these steps to lower level uh, ESL students? Um, again, uh, you know, everybody's teaching situation is different. Uh, repetition, a lot of repetition, uh, demonstrating the steps. And, you know, if you're in, uh, in a live person to person class, uh, demonstrating the steps uh, repeatedly is, uh, is helpful. Just a moment. Uh, Uh, you know, that's all I can say. Uh, and again, uh, just repetitions. Right, so, um, and Chris is asking, do the students create their own slides? Yes, that's, in this particular case, that's the idea of the project. And, you know, it's, it, it's just, again, it's just, I call it a one word poem, a way to express themselves uh, with, with a little bit of creativity with the vocabulary uh, that they know. Okay. okay, so let me stop the share and we can move on to the, the next thing. See, did that work? Uh, let's see, current slide. So, um, do you see this website called uh, makebeliefscomics.com? Anybody? Did I do that right? Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. So, um, along these same lines, this is a really, really excellent website. Uh, is there anybody who's heard of it? Uh, Bill Zimmerman started this uh, many, many years ago, uh, you know, for ESL uh, 
teachers and it's really grown over the years. Uh, anybody here? Has anybody heard of it? Okay, we have one person. Okay, so there are many, many, many things that, that can be done uh, with this website. Uh, but the one that I like to talk about most is this Create Comics. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop the share and we'll, we'll do it live. Let's see, I wanna make sure that the, we're in the right location. Okay. All right, and let me share the screen now that everything is lined up. So it's a pretty intuitive um, website. Uh, you have that you do have to um, create a, like a free account. You can. It just uh, you know, increases a little bit of the security. You can just use your, uh, you know, let's typical sign in with Google or, you know, use an email. Uh, it's really very, very uh, minimal. But uh, the default is this three panel uh, comic strip. You can add more panels if you want. And again, this is, all, you know, you demonstrate this to, um, you know, to your students, just like I'm demonstrating to you. Uh, you show them, let me, that you have some tools here and then characters here. And this is a whole nother uh, type of prompt, but basically we're gonna focus on this one, characters and the tools. And so the first is highlighted, the first uh, panel is highlighted. You do have to name your comic. So I'm gonna call this TDLS. 2022, and you do need a name, okay? And let's just take a look at some of the characters. So uh, hopefully you can all see that. So the, uh, lots of different, you know, fantasy or more realistic characters, uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, options. And so basically all, what you do, is you, you pick a character. And when, when you, then you have a few different poses that are possible. And when you select the character, then it appears in the, in the panel. And th this is where you can start using the, the tools so the, the first one is move, it's the default. So you can just move it anywhere, move your character around. This one is scale, which when you click on it, you get this little thing, you can make the, the, the character larger or smaller. Uh, when you have more than one item in the panel, you have the bring to front, okay, flip. You have to you select the tool and then you click on the character and it just flips it. That's exactly what it does. This is nice. This is new. If, for those of you who haven't seen this uh, or haven't seen this for a while, you can now record uh, um, audio. And then finally, if you're really not happy with something, you can delete that one particular item. So once you have a character, then I use the back button. And now we're going to get to the talk balloons, okay? So for example, you have some things and it, same type of thing, you, you select the one you want, you can move it and then you click just to write. Now, in this particular case, uh, I didn't have enough room, so I, I have a choice. I can go back and get a slightly larger uh, presentation. 
Okay, I'm sorry, a, a slightly larger uh, speech balloon, maybe I'll do that. So I wanna delete that one. We'll get a slightly larger one. Okay, uh, if that's all you want in that panel, then you click on the next panel, get a new character, go back, find another character. Okay, move it around, okay. then go back, get your speech balloon. You have different styles again. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, to do the audio, you know, you would click on the audio and record the voice. Now, let's say that was those are the only two I want, so I can click on that and I'll subtract one. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So now that you've got it, and maybe you've added a uh, speech to it, you want to uh, save it. Okay. And then you want to figure out how you're going to distribute it. So you, you basically have three choices, print, share, or email. So if you're you know, connected to a printer, uh, you have a print button, you can share it to all sorts of, you know, directly to Facebook or Twitter if you want, uh, but also you can email it to yourself or email it to your teacher uh, by filling out the little form and then uh, emailing it. So this is the sender's email. And then this is who you're gonna send it to. So in this case, I'm gonna send it to myself. So at that point, then you can create a new comic or go back and edit it if you, you know, like if, like for example, they turn it into you and you notice that there's a, a gram grammatical error or spelling error, uh, they can come back and uh, edit it and, and uh, where they find it is view all saved comics. See, and so then you see a list of the saved comics. So, uh, and I really encourage you to look at some of these other uh, things that he has. It's just really, really packed full of what he calls starters. And so you can see that, for example, you know, these are like pre-formatted prompts uh, that you could have your students pick and then they, you know, some of the work has already been, been done for them. Let's check the... Um, uh, Angie asked if you can copy from one frame to another. You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, I haven't done that for a while. Okay, so let's get back to our, let's see what we're doing for time. Okay. That's the wrong one. What I want to do uh, is uh, briefly, uh, do you remember that um, Kahoot game? Uh, real quickly, let's see what it may be like in class. Okay, so uh, if you um, have a, your mobile device, uh, go ahead and uh, we're going to go to um, Kahoot.it for those of you that uh, know uh, no Kahoot. Let me get to uh, the game. Where did I put it?
So I'm, I'm going to share the Kahoot game for a moment. And let me share this. All right, so um, are you seeing the game pin? No, we just see you. Uh, just see me, maybe I didn't actually start sharing. Thank you for that. How about now? Yes, now we see it. Okay, so for those of you who uh, have never played Kahoot, it's sort of a fun game. You have to go to www.kahoot.it. I see some people are already popping in. Okay. And uh, you enter in the number 6689302. And then it will ask you to type your name. And it looks like we've got 11 uh, people so far. We've got about 36 participants in the in the webinar, so we'll wait a little bit, give people more time to uh, join. Okay, how? And, um, this workshop uh, was slated to go for 60 minutes, but uh, we haven't gotten to any of the videos uh, activities yet, which uh, I think really are the, the ice cream uh, of this webinar. So uh, I'm, I'm fully prepared to go a little bit longer. I, I hope uh, you'll stick with me. So we've got about 20 people playing. Are there 21? Are there more who wish to, to join or should I go ahead and start the game? Give me. If you don't mind, give me some feedback. Go ahead and start or wait a few more moments. I think you're probably good, Barry. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start. So this is the name game, hopefully, uh, since you've been looking at the chat for a while or you've been looking at the webinar. So uh, on your mobile device, uh, select the uh, name of this person. And for those of you who've never played Kahoot, uh, on the left, you see a timer. On the right, you see how many students have answered. And so, uh, pretty good. That is uh, Patricia, and it looks like uh, most of you got that right. So we'll do next. And very good. So Angie's out in front. Very nice, Angie, with R. Rod coming in second, and Betsy in third place, and EC and GM on the scoreboard as well. Here's the next question. Okay, counting down, four, three, two, one. All right, most people answered. Ha, ah, that's correct. That is me, quite some time ago, but it, nevertheless, it is me. Good job. Okay, let's see if that changed the scoreboard. Our Rod moved up to first place. Congratulations, Angie. Okay, EC, Betsy, and Sabina is now on the board. Oh, sorry, you know what? We have to skip that one. I forgot to put the correct answer. My mistake, that's what I was trying to do uh, at the beginning of the presentation. That's, uh, that's Julia. We'll do one more.
Very nice, great job. Uh, so in any case, I'll stop it uh, right now. But that's, what do you think about that? Um, you know, for the first week of class, uh, doing something, you know, of course you have to know how to use Kahoot, but you have to be able to grab the, the student uh, photos. But it's a really great activity for students. Uh, it introduces them to uh, Kahoot. And it, um, you know, helps them get to know each other. Okay. So uh, uh, the one comment, uh, if great, if we have student picks. So again, you know, like I did right today, uh, if you're online, um, I use the Zoom to take screenshots uh, of people. I did ask them permission uh, before I did that. Uh, if you have, you know, if they're in person, you know, you just take, take their pictures. Uh, I used to just line everybody up in the room and one after another, click, 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 click uh, over the, you know, my many, many years of doing it. Um, I only had a very few students who, you know, resisted and that's okay. Okay, so uh, let's get back to uh, the presentation and we'll do some of the video prompts. And then we'll, we can uh, wrap it up. So let me share my screen. And we've got the presentation. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay, so uh, again, the, I've got three uh, separate clips. And the idea here uh, in these clips uh, is to uh, be a prompt for discussion. So uh, in this first one, uh, I'll start the clip. Uh, hopefully, let me know if you can hear the sound or not. Uh, you should be able to hear the sound. Uh, and the idea is to watch it, and then we're gonna talk about uh, what we think is gonna happen next. How's the sound, by the way, can you hear it? Yes. Okay. okay, so um unmute yourselves and just uh let's just shout it out. What uh what do you think is gonna happen next? Maybe he can't find his keys to get in the car. Okay. Tornado. You, you think there'll be a tornado? Okay. Somebody pulls away in the car. Oh, somebody pulls away. Okay. Yeah. He rolls down the window. Rolls down the window. Okay. Somebody in the car rolls down the window. And and by the way, you could do this in you know in groups as a little bit of a competition if you wanted to. That often was fun. Or have students come to the board if you're in the class or you know, like post it on the jam board, you know, their different uh, suggestions. Okay, so we have a few suggestions. So uh, let me go to the next clip. Oops. Sorry, let me do it that way. Was that a surprise to anybody? I wouldn't have guessed that. Exactly, and in all the years that I've done this, uh, nobody's ever really guessed that. Okay, now, what do you think will happen next? That animal will spit them back out, Mary, I think. Okay, so we have uh, one person saying spit them back out, okay? Any other suggestions? Maybe the car is a submarine. Maybe the car is a submarine, okay. I think you're all still stunned. Okay, I well, let's take that, a look. Go I think ahead. that creature will come for the car, for the cardboard car. Okay, and do what? I don't know, maybe take it under the water with the, with the jogger. Okay, let's take a look.
get it? What do you think? Do you think that that would be something that your students might enjoy doing? Nobody? Oh, I see in the chat, I see people are saying yes. Okay, great. Oh, and also there was, I, yeah, I didn't have the chat open. I should keep the chat open. Uh, Laura had suggested a UFO will come to save him. Yeah. But anyway, the, the name of this, uh, this was originally a, a commercial for Toyota. The name of the clip is called Bait Car. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This one is really great around Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be Thanksgiving turkey, but that's what I call it. Let's take a look. Okay. What do you think will, will happen next? The turkey will fall on the floor. Okay, that's one idea. Does anybody else have a different idea? It goes through the drain. It goes through the drain. Okay, thank you. All right, well, let's go ahead and see. Barry, what about that creature from the lake comes through the window, grabs it? I like that. I like that, but no. Oh. Who said that? Who said it would fall on the floor? I did, but it's more like she dropped it more than it fell, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I think the within the you know linguistics, uh, fall on the floor will is, is close enough. So congratulations on that. Let's take a look at the next clip. Okay, what do you think will happen now? It'll fall again. Okay, we had a suggestion it will fall again. It'll go out the window. Okay, there's a The woman a falls in the Laura, drain. Laura said it'll go through the window. Uh, that was in the text, but who said fall. it out loud? It'll fly away. It will fly away. Okay. The Are woman the falls in the drain. Let's see. <laughs> Pretty good if you said it would go out the window, but nobody quite guessed exactly the ending. All right, here's the final one. Let's take a look. Thank you. Let's check that shot. Just putting the feeder hose into the back of the machine. We're getting water directly from the lake over there. Is there a blanket or get some, you know, like a warm? Hey guys, guys, we've got company. Okay, so what what will happen next? They see a polar bear. Okay, uh, that that first clip did have a little bit of a clue, so uh, let's just go ahead and watch it. We've got company. Let's just move away from it's a bear. It's a bear. It's fine. We're fine. Just calmly walk over here. We're fine. You too, sir. Now, please. Let's just give the bear a minute. He's got to move on. Just let the bear be. Okay, what's going to happen next? The bear will jump on top of the washer. Okay. Or try to crawl inside. Try to crawl inside, okay. It will put its bear suit into the machine. So Bina says it will put its bear suit into the machine. And I think it will turn on the machine too. 
with the suit in the machine and the machine turns on. Ah, okay, well, let's take a look. Oh, and by the way, Evelyn is asking, uh, what's the turkey video called? I like to find it on YouTube. Well, guess what? Um, as a, your as your door prize, everybody, for uh, coming to my session, I've actually uh, saved all these videos pre-cut, uh, and I'm going to share share them with you at the end. So you don't actually have to do any searching at all, and you don't have to do any editing uh, unless you don't like the way I've edited these. Okay. Let's take a look. It's got company. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't go to the next one. There we go. I know somebody's really happy with themselves. Great job, boy. Very few people ever guess that. Okay, so now what's going to happen? He'll take off the second bear suit. Okay. Anything, any other ideas? At some point that washing machine has to turn on, I would think. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, I think this, I didn't, I don't think I advanced. Hold on, let me, let me go to the next one. There we go. All right, so congratulations to those of you who predicted that uh, he put his bear suit into the machine and uh, turn it on. Now what's gonna happen next? I think he's gonna take a photograph of the people. Take a photograph of the people. The camera's right there, right? Anybody else? I think that people will take a photo with him, like a selfie with him. Okay. That's a good suggestion, yes. Uh, in the chat, Laura says he's gonna dance. Okay, let's take a look. Sitting in my chair, sitting in my chair. Okay, what's going to happen next? You just want to wait and see? Okay, here we go. Sitting in my chair. Sitting in my chair. <laughs> All right. You guys, some of you have some great ideas and pretty close. What's going to happen next? Oh, and we had also a, he's going to remove his shorts. That was a great guess. He's going to open it when a, before the cycle's done. Okay, he's going to open it before the cycle is done. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Insane. It got that clean on a cold cycle. Okay, can we go back to work now, Mr. Oh. Ranger? The bear's now leaving. Okay, gang, it's, good for, it's clear for us to go back to set. Oh, it's a polar bear. All you wanted to do is use the washing machine. There you go. Congratulations for those of you who made it all the way through. Uh, a real creative uh, commercial uh, for Samsung washers. Um, but anyway, what, what do you think? Uh, you know, do you think that these, uh, this type of clip uh, is something that would spark discussions or, you know, conversations in, in your classes? Yes. Uh, and, and, and especially maybe if you, um, you know, have a prize for, you know, correct answers, uh, I think, um, they were, they were always a lot of fun. And, you know, what you can do, of course, is, you know, you can continue doing, you know, looking for uh,
commercials and things that have that little surprise uh, ending. I mean, that's most of the commercials, you know, try to aim for that and the very successful ones uh, do that. So um, I did wanna mention uh, a particular website that I actually learned uh, at, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was last year's TDLS or just in the meantime at, at a webinar, uh, Melinda Holt uh, introduced this to me. Uh, if you, you know, think about working with videos, uh, this is a really, and also audio, this is a really great website, uh, 123apps.com. Uh, uh, I just took a screenshot of the first few, but really simple to use uh, audio tools and video tools. So like trimming, you know, trimming off a, a longer video, uh, really, really easy. Uh, so I'd like to um, encourage you to, uh, to do that. Uh, okay, so in the comments, um, Michelle says, John West Salmon Bear Fight ad is another good one. So I'll have to, uh, I'll jot that down myself. I can go uh, take a look at it. John West Salmon. So are we are, are we saying the salmon is like fighting the bear? Is that what that it means? I think John West is a brand name for salmon. Ah, and their okay. their advertisement is known as the bear fight or bear versus man. I'm not sure. I see. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll take a look for that. So, um, as promised, um, I, I spent a, quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get you all of these uh, video clips without me having to upload every single one into the chat. So, um, what I've come up with is a, I, I, I uploaded all of the clips uh, into a, a Google Drive that, I, that should be um, you know, available to anyone uh, with the link, okay? And then I took all of those links and I, um, I made a, a Word document, okay? And so I'm sharing the Word document in the chat. And then uh, hopefully, uh, and I also, I also added this website in there as well um, to help you remember, but hopefully, and I, I did double check this this morning, you know, just by going down in sequence uh, to all the URLs, you know, you should be able to download uh, the different, um, You, you should be able to download the different links. So uh, before we uh, you know, finish up, um, can somebody verify that the links in the, the Word document are working for you? And, and if not, uh, I will, I mean, I'm fairly confident they will work because I, I did work hard on this to make sure that it, it would work for everybody. But I will put my uh, email uh that's good okay the first link works if that's any indication so great work for me okay fine so i did put my email in there in case there are any issues or if you have um further questions um you can uh email me uh let me go to the uh the slideshow uh and um save it as a PDF. Uh, and I, the truth is, I don't know uh, if um, the videos will come through when you save as a PDF. Maybe some of you who have more experience with that would know. Um, but uh, in any case, you actually have, I mean, you don't really need the, the, the videos in the PowerPoint because you have the videos uh, individually. So let me see if I can get that now. Uh, 
Okay, so hold on just a moment. Let me, let me see where I saved it. Current folder. Okay. PowerPoint PDF. Try it again. Save. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble finding where I just saved it as a PDF, but let me um, keep working on that. Um, there was a question from Angie. Did I use the one, two, three apps to cut this video into clips? Um, I did adjust it, yes. Uh, that's the trim one. Uh, also, uh, you will see that uh, in that Word document, um, you have the whole entire video. So if you want to cut it into different clips, you have the actual uh, entire video uh, to do that with. Um, and, and the one, two, three apps is really easy. It's uh, like a web-based uh, interface. Uh, you know, you just select the video you want to upload, you upload it, a really easy interface appears and, you know, you just move a slider uh, at the front and at the back to trim it. Then you, you, down, you save that and download it. Uh, and it pops into your download folder uh, as a, you know, with the trim that you want. It's really quite, quite easy. Okay, so let me just figure out why it's not, why I don't find the PDF. Uh, save as, maybe I'll just put it on the documents. Huh, it should be there. So let me try it again. Share from my computer. TLS. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, PDF. All right. Okay. Okay. So there you go. I was successful. And uh, you should have the um, the slide presentation as well. So without uh, further delay, uh, we can start to wrap it up. Uh, there was a comment uh, earlier about it originally scheduled for uh, going until 2.30. Th this time slot is was from 1 to 2.30. But if you look at the descriptions, uh, presentations were of different length. So originally this was, I had thought to do this in uh, in 60 minutes, but that didn't really work out anyway. So I'm glad we had the extra time. So uh, if you do have a chance uh, to use any of these ideas, you have my uh, email. Uh, it's always great to get feedback uh, on my ideas uh, and see, let me know how they work with your class. So if there, unless there are any further questions, uh, I think that uh, we can tell uh, Patricia to uh, wrap it up.